Hello everybody, this is Azel the Basement Dweller here, and welcome to a video that I should have made a long time ago looking back. We got some good music, we got some good tunes, we got a fighting game. I realized, as long as I've been making YouTube videos trying to help people play fighting games, and then after that big hubbub I made last week with my whole uh, issue with the FGC video, I realized I've been very unfriendly to beginners lately, and for that I'm sorry. Today, I've decided to turn a new leaf. I'm going to make a very beginner-friendly video. I'm going to teach people the meanings uh, and visual applications for very popular fighting game terms. Because this is very necessary information that a lot of people need, and uh, while it's well documented on the internet, I feel like, you know, uh, sometimes people are having a video, some people are visual learners. They need to see something. You can explain it to them a million times, but until they see it, they won't know. So, I'll show you guys. We're going to do some popular stuff. Um, I picked Skullgirls because it has a good blend of a lot of mechanics, um, which makes it work perfectly for a video like this. So, Skullgirls, I have the uh, inputs on to show you guys notation and stuff. First thing, a lot of things, uh, basics, walking, obviously, characters walk when you press the movement stick, that's easy. Jumping, uh, pretty simple, most games will teach you this, but you can jump forward, uh, neutral, and back. And then some games, uh, typically anime fighters, or air dashers as they're called, will have super jumps, where you tap down and then press up, and you get a bigger jump, as you see compared to the normal jump, you go much higher. Characters have dashes or sprints. Annie has a sprint. As long as you're holding this button, she'll run. But her back dash is in fact a dash. She goes a set distance backwards. A better example would be Beowulf. Beowulf has a dash in both directions. Both of these are dashes, typical fighting game dashes. Other terms you'll hear a lot. Uh, other than, you know, that's basic movement stuff. Uh, there's a few things like air dashes. Some characters are able to do dashes in midair. Uh, it's just when you do a dash and put it in midair, you get to move a set amount, which is cool. Now it's on to moves. So typically, fighting game notation uh, is written in a few different ways. Sometimes fighting game notation will be in the 1, 2, 3, 4 format. Sometimes it'll be in the A, B, C, D format. Sometimes it'll be in the punch kick format. So, for, for the sake of Skullgirls, we'll talk about it in uh, uh, attack strength and numbers. So, every fighting game typically uh, has uh, buttons assigned to different normals. So, in this game, uh, it uses the Street Fighter system. It's a six-button fighting game. So, there's Light Punch, which is... Typically, your character's fastest normal, uh, your your main go-to for wake-ups and interrupts, uh, and typically, they don't have great range, but they're incredibly fast, and they lead to uh, decent conversions. Next up, so lights are typically called jabs. Your jab is your light. Next up are mediums. Your mediums are typically longer range buttons. Uh, or very combo-friendly buttons. These are typically your go-to pokes, as they are the most combo-friendly buttons that a character has. Um, these are called strongs. Or, um... Hold on, actually, fighting game. The, the, the thing. I'm trying to think. <laughs> there's, a, there's a special word for these. There's jabs, uh... I know for this, because I know uh, short is light kick. Light kick is your short. So there's jab, short, um, there's long and roundhouse for kicks. And then, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. You're strong, yeah. It's typically called you're strong. So jab, strong, fierce. And then short, um, short roundhouse and um, uh, short roundhouse and forward, or short forward and roundhouse. So jab, strong, fierce, uh, short forward roundhouse. Um, typically, your your medium punch very combo friendly and. This is normally where your character will have a command normal. A command normal is normal where you press the normal to do a 
or the, the input to do a normal, but you press a directional input or hold the button or something. For example, Annie has forward medium punch, which is Andromeda Slice, versus her normal medium punch, the two different normals. Both of these are technically mediums, but one of them has a special property. Uh, your Fierce, this is typically your strongest standing button and your go-to for optimal combos. Usually they have very big hitboxes, uh, but they're more slow than other normals or have longer recovery. For example, I cannot move after holding this one. If I do this and then hold up, very long time before I recover. Versus a jab, where I recover much faster. Even a medium punch, I recover much faster. So, you know, uh, your, your heavies are typically your high-risk buttons, but they're your highest reward buttons as well. Um... And then obviously, your light kicks, they, these serve very similar purposes. Um, in Skullgirls, your heavy kick is typically your launcher. Um, which is not the case in most fighting games. Typically, your, your heavy kick is a button that has a lot of range, um, but either is very unsafe or very slow. Um, good examples of this are like Street Fighter, like Alex's heavy kick, where it's incredibly slow, but it does a decent amount of damage, and it's uh, hard to punish at range. Next are move types. So in most fighting games, there are uh, five types of moves total. There are lows, mids, highs, overheads, and then uh, unblockables. And then obviously there are like grabs um, and command grabs, but those I kind of lump command grabs in with unblockables because most unblockables are command grabs. So. A low attack is an opponent that can, or is an attack that can hit an opponent when they are standing. If an opponent is standing, um, if an opponent is standing, they can block mids and overheads. However, they can't block lows. A mid will hit an opponent regardless of if they're standing or crouching, but cannot break guard. Uh, they will typically they hit mid, and, you know, you can't really break somebody's guard with one of these, but, you know, they, they help you keep your pressure going. And then finally are overheads uh, for normal attack types. Overheads can hit opponents who are blocking low. A low cannot hit an opponent who is blocking low. They cannot be hit by a low. However, an overhead, which are typically very slow attacks, mind you, an overhead is typically an incredibly slow attack with a telegraph startup that leads into a, a full combo string. Um, it, that's pretty typical in most fighting games. Sometimes it doesn't lead to a full combo, it's just to break guard, just like in Dragon Ball Fighters or in uh, Street Fighter 3rd Strike with universal overheads. But um, Next up are grabs and command grabs. Grabs and command grabs both can hit an opponent regardless of where they're blocking. The difference between a throw and a command grab is that a throw can be tacked. So, for example, she tries to throw me, we can I can tech that throw. But if Sarabella uh, alternatively That's not what I meant to do. If Sarabella alternatively command grabs I can grab her out of it, but I cannot tech this throw. That is not a techable throw. So, in, in the case of this... Keep getting the range wrong. I cannot tech that. There is nothing I can do to tech this command grab. Ah, well. I guess this is a better example. Yeah, she threw throw teched me. But yeah, if I try to grab her there, you see my throw comes out, but I still get grabbed. A command grab is a throw that cannot be teched. Um, they are typically very strong, and in Skullgirls, a lot of command grabs can be comboed out of, or are combo enders with heavy knockdowns. So, command grabs are typically, um, very hard to deal with for a lot of newer players, because obviously you want to block, you don't want to get hit, but you end up eating a lot of unblockable damage because you're sitting still, and you're getting thrown, or you're getting, you know, you're getting, uh, command grabbed, because you don't want to, uh, move. So, important thing to note, command grabs can hit you regardless of where you're blocking. However, you can jump over command grabs and throws, unless the character has an air throw, which is just a throw you can do in air. But if a character, if she tries to command grab me and I jump, I get a punish. 
A punish is when you a character does a move that has a long recovery. They cannot re uh, they cannot act after using the move for a bit. And you take your turn back. You press a button, you start a combo. It's whatever... A punish is whichever attack you use uh, that uh, that is during the recovery of an opponent's move. So that's pretty universal stuff. Overheads, command grabs, all that. Um, next up, more, more complicated things. So, special moves. Special, special moves are moves that a character can use that require special inputs. So there are normals, which are just your buttons... Uh, and your command normals, which, you know, stuff like that. Um, but, there's special moves. So, if I do down kick or forward kick, you know, they're, they're their own normals. But if I do down forward kick, or half circle forward kick, I get a special move. It's A special move is a move that you have to do an input to get. And with special moves, in most fighting games, Skullgirls is a weird exception because some characters have this, there are EX moves. EX moves are enhanced moves, or meter burn moves. These are moves that have normal properties that can be enhanced by using some form of resource. In Beowulf's case, his hype can be used as a resource to make a move stronger. Typically, Wolf Blitzer, this attack, can be used three times. You can change direction uh, any of those three times. But you can only do it three times. However, for each bar of hype you have, you can do one additional uh, wolf blitz at the cost of a bar of hype. One, two, three. But now I have three hype. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, enhanced moves are typically stronger versions of move that cost resources. Uh, sometimes they have better frame advantage. Sometimes they deal more damage. Or sometimes they have better oki. Uh, frame advantage is a plus frames. Plus frames are negative frames. That's recovery uh, versus block stun. So if I hit Cerebella, right? And uh, let's see. Uh, does this game have frame data? Not that. Not attack data. Um, oh, at the bottom of the screen. Okay. So for example... Oh, wait. I think it was part of... Yeah, okay. So, this move has 11 frames of startup and is 0 on hit. This move has 14 frames of startup and is negative 1. She recovers a frame faster than I do when I do this attack. I'm plus 4 after this move, though. Which means I recover 4 frames faster than she does. My animation ends 4 frames earlier, meaning I can act 4 frames earlier. Fighting games are counted in frames. Frames is the amount of animations um, per tick. And a tick is just, you know, the time used by a game. So 13 frames, 13 separate frames of animation. From the time that he pulls the microphone out to put it away, there are 13 individual animation frames that play. So with these 13 frames, I recover 4 frames faster, which means she's in uh, 17 frames of hit stun. I recover 4 frames faster than she does. Uh, that's a very simple explanation of frame data. And a big part of frame data, or one thing that comes with frame data, is Oki's MA. So for example, if I knock her down, she's forced to, uh, you know, sit down. If I do that and then dash up, I'm plus 31, which means I have 31 frames to do whatever I want while she's recovering. Okizeme is what you do when an opponent is knocked down. Uh, actions you take while an opponent is knocked down to further your advantage. So for example, since she has to recover, I can get a forward dash. She cannot do anything about this forward dash. If she wakes up with a, a grab, I tech the throw. And if she wakes up with a normal, I grab her out of it. I win in that scenario because I knocked her down and got a dash up. Alternatively, if I do this, uh, I'm, I'm losing Okizeme. I'm forfeiting my turn. Your turn in fighting games is when it's expected for you to be on the aggressive. So, when I knock somebody down and get a dash in, it's my turn. If I get knocked down or command grabbed, and then they call in an assist, um, like this. So, if I hit her with, like, this, and then throw the chair, when she gets up, it's still my turn, because I'm still the one standing. It's still my advantage. Uh, there's a term called fighting for your turn back, which is... You, you press very fast buttons in an attempt to trip up your opponent and uh, fight so that it's your turn to be on the aggressive. Which is a pretty, you know, simple explanation of that. The, um... After frame advantage and Oki, 
uh, there comes, you know, a lot of things. Knockdowns. There are two, typically two types of knockdowns in fighting games. Soft knockdowns and hard knockdowns. A soft knockdown is something that you can tech. What a tech is, is when you hit the ground, if you're holding a button in a direction, your character will recover in that direction. And recover just means your character will get back up. So, for example, this is a soft knockdown. She gets knocked down, but can immediately back roll and then recover. But, if I have hype, and I do this command grab, that's a heavy knockdown. She is forced to get up. She cannot back roll. She cannot forward roll. She cannot tech this in any way. She has to get up at the same speed at the same time. A heavy knockdown is a knockdown that always has the same timing. There is no variable timing in a heavy knockdown. A character will have to get up uh, at the same amount of time. Heavy knockdowns are scary because after somebody gives you a he uh, heavy knockdown or hits you with one, they get to fight, uh, they get to maintain their turn for longer because if you're knocked down, he can do whatever he wants, you know? He, he gets this knockdown, he can set up his chair or call in an assist. Uh, like Annie's projectile, if I had that as her assist. He can get setup going. And setup is just when you do something uh, for to, to future proof. So for example, if the enemy's knocked down, uh, for example, if I switch to Annie, and the opponent gets knocked down, right? So if I call in the Beowulf assist, which I have to wait for the chair to get back, and then while she's knocked down, I throw uh, a fireball. That's a setup. Because, yeah, then when she gets up, as you can see, she got hit with the fireball uh, as she got up. So that's a setup because it was done when she couldn't do anything, and it was help it was to help me future proof. If she presses a button there, she's getting hit, and I get a full combo. If she doesn't press a button, I'm maintaining pressure. Pressure is when you you keep a character in block stun for an extended period of time and keep them from fighting for the turn. Uh, typically, you know, your pressure is when somebody's blocking you'll press your buttons that have very good frame data. So for example, after I knock her down, I can press stand light kick. If she gets hit with this, you know, whatever, that's a full combo for me. If she blocks this, um, if she blocks this, I'm still, I'm, we're neutral. We're, I've reset the neutral. I'm plus zero. We recover at the exact same time, which means it's still technically my turn because since we're plus zero, I can jab. And once I jab, I can get my pressure going. So as you can see, none of these scenarios leave me negative. And throughout all that, I'm negative zero at the end. She has to fight to interrupt me, and if she presses the wrong button, I get a counter hit. A counter hit is when you attack somebody during the startup of a move. Typically, a counter hit will give you special properties when you hit somebody. Uh, it'll deal more damage, or the move itself will have a special property. Uh, for example... This move, you know, typically it's a soft knockdown. I believe on counter hit... That's how you can tell uh, it's a counter hit, by the way. It'll do the broken heart symbol in this game. Uh, so if we look at it... Yeah, it does much more damage as a counter hit. Normally, it does 1690. If it's a counter hit, it does 2535, which is a big damage increase. Um, which is huge. Damage, obviously, is how much... Uh, the, the numerical value of health that you're dealing... Or that you're reducing from a character every time you attack. That combo does 8500 damage. She has uh, 3000 health max. I just did, you know... Like, um, a fifth of her health bar. Or something like that, you know? And this brings me into more specific things with, uh, Skullgirls and Assist Fighters. Or Team Fighters. So in this game, you can have multiple people on a team. A few terms that you have to know here. Tag in and tag out. So... A tag-in or a tag-out is when you use the input designed by the game to switch characters. That's a tag-in to Annie, and that's a tag-in to Beowulf. So I'm tagging out Beowulf and tagging in Annie. It's when you switch characters. Characters have assists. There is typically a button in the game dedicated to using uh, your um, t benched characters, one of your benched characters' attacks. So for example, Beowulf, it's his heavy hurting hurl. 
Uh, and then for Annie, it's her uppercut. Which, you know, those are your assists. You can use those to uh, further your combos or, you know, apply pressure. So, for example, if I do, you know, like... Um, I don't know why my input didn't come out, but... As you can see there, the, the, the chair gave me an extra hit on the combo. So, you know, with, with that, you can use assist to extend combos or to apply pressure. If she's blocking, you know, I can throw the chair after I do something unsafe to stop her from moving. Um, which is cool. Uh, the other, another popular term in these games is, uh, DHC, or a dual heat cancel, uh, pretty much just, a uh, 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 when you use a super attack. A super attack is a special move that typically costs resources to do, but is incredibly powerful. Um, in Skullgirls, there are five bars of meter, a character has a level one super attack, uh, and then they can have supers from level one to level five. For each number of the super, it costs that much meter. Meter is the... Um, glowing bar under the health bar, which is uh, outside the character, the orange bar. The bar that's flashing rainbow is my meter. I build that for attacking the enemy or from blocking attacks, and I can spend it to do super attacks. So that costs one bar of meter. I went from five to four. My level three costs three bars of meter. I go from five to two. Uh, and then my level two costs two, or that's my level one. My level two costs two bars of meter. I go from five to three. And typically, the amount of meter you spend dictates the amount of damage or utility an ultimate will have. Uh, typically, the more it costs, the more utility or the more damage it'll have. Uh, for example, Annie's level 3 is a setup level 3 that has more damage. A level 1, it's a beam. It's quite unsafe on block. Uh, but this leaves them in hit stun for a very long time. Hit stun is the amount of uh, fra uh, frame disadvantage a move leaves you in. So, for example, that bar under her when I hit her, that's how many frames uh, she can't move after I hit her. Like, no matter what she presses, you know, I hit her and she has to wait through those frames to attack me. So, that's a, that's a pretty rudimentary thing. Other things in fighting games that you might hear a lot. Um, fireballs. Fireballs are any um, special moves or normals that create projectiles. Uh, these will typically be disjoints. They will not have a hurt box on them. They will travel uh, mid to full screen distance and allow you to apply or keep pressure on an opponent from far away. Um, now... Uh, what a hitbox or a hurtbox is, a hitbox, when you use an attack, it's the, uh, in-engine, uh, the phys- it's like the physical, uh, you know, hit of the, the attack. So these are the hitboxes. The green and blue boxes are where the character can be hit. If my attacks reach anywhere within those boxes, if my box goes inside her box, if we slow this down, If this red box in any way touches the blue box, it hits her. So a, a hitbox is the uh, in-game representation in the code of your attack. And then, obviously, um, a hurtbox are... So a hitbox would be the red box that shows up for a brief period of time when I attack. Uh, and then your hurt box is the boxes on the characters that represent your character. It's the in-game mesh for your character. So as you can see, if the red box doesn't touch, sometimes moves will look like they should hit and they don't. Which happens sometimes because hit boxes can be a little jank. Like for example, this, this touches her shoe. But I have to get a little bit closer to hit. So, that's why sometimes moves will look like they connect when they shouldn't, or sometimes moves won't connect when they when it looks like they should have, um, because of hitboxes and hurtboxes. Um, fireballs are disjoints, and what a disjoint is, uh, a disjoint is a move that does not have a hurtbox attached to it. You, the player, cannot be hit. If they punch the fireball, if she uh, 
punches the fireball. Or if she if she tries to punch the fireball. It doesn't do anything to me, the player, if she punches it, because I don't have a there's no hitbox attachment, it's just a hurt box. Or there's no hurt box attachment, it's just a hitbox. So as you can see, she she cannot touch me if I throw one of these. You know? Like I if she hits the fireball, it doesn't affect me. It's a disjoint. Or that is what a disjoint is. Um Another term you might hear a lot is a DP. A DP means a dragon punch. Uh, these are your invincible wake-ups. Invincible is a state your character can be in where they cannot be hit. Uh, so for example, she can hit me when I'm standing. But, as you can see, she tries to hit me. When my hitbox turns white, it's when I use my DP, my invincible uh, wake-up. She cannot hit me as long as my hitbox is white. I am invincible. Oh, for that duration. So DPs are invincible moves where you cannot be hit while using them that typically have very long recovery. For example, this on whiff is minus 74. If I do it on block, uh, it's it's going to be pretty bad on block. Because DPs are always bad on block. Negative 33, negative 30, and negative 28. You know, like, they're, you, you will get punished for using a DP on block. Um... So your, your DP is just, it's an, it's an invincible move. Uh, it typically has a Z input, so forward, uh, forward down forward for the input. Which you make like a little Z with the analog stick. Um, that's your DP, that's a term you might hear a lot in fighting games. Another term you might hear a lot in fighting games uh, that a lot of people might not understand is a wall splat or a wall bounce. Uh, for example, Annie's North Knuckle wall splats. If you hit somebody with this move against the wall, they hit the wall and then fall down. If you do this with a normal move, they won't hit the wall, but, you know, they'll be hit. But if you use a move like this, they will in fact hit the wall. So a wall splat is a move that causes a character's hitbox to collide with the invisible walls on the side of the stage. And then a wall bounce is the same premise, but instead of... Uh, splatting against the wall and stopping and falling, they will bounce off the wall. Um, a good example of this is Cerebella's level 3. Where I will bounce off the other wall. That is a wall bounce. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, you might hear some characters have a float. A float is when a character can change their jump arc, which is just the arc of their jump. I start here and I will end up past the chair. Uh, but I can super jump and end up way farther. Uh, I can back jump and, you know, or neutral jump and be straight. Or, with a float, I can use my jump arc to float across the screen. So her jump medium pun or jump medium kick is a float. It allows me to change my jump arc. Uh, another term you might hear a lot is dive kick. A dive kick is any move, typically airborne, where the, you know, the character dives. They do a kick while diving. Uh, these are typically moves that can be done instantly as soon as you jump. Uh, which is why they're particularly scary. This creates an instant overhead scenario. What an instant overhead scenario is, is when a character jumps and then immediately presses a button. That's an overhead. Uh, for example, this is actually also in Cerebella's kit. Cerebella has one of the most notorious uh, instant overheads in the game. Because, obviously, if she jumps and does this, that's an overhead. But an instant overhead would be, uh, this. As soon as she jumps, this looks like a standing normal, but what I'm doing is I'm jumping and then immediately hitting down medium punch, which is her overhead. It's this normal. It's a heavy knockdown. But you can do it as soon as you leave the ground, which leads to low overhead mix-up. Because I can do this and then immediately go overhead. So, uh, an instant overhead is an overhead that can be done as soon as you leave the ground. These are typically very hard to deal with and make it very hard to block against certain characters. This is an example of one of the more notorious ones in fighting games, because it can be done almost as soon as you leave the ground. Um, uh, 
Another term you might hear is mix up or low overhead mix. So obviously a low is a move that can only hit standing opponents and an overhead is a move that can only hit crouching opponents. A low overhead mix up is where uh, you prevent a character, they, they will have to guess whether you're going to do a low or an overhead uh, during a string. So for example, um, if I do, I'm trying to think of a good example of this because I'm, I'm trying to think of like good low overhead mix ups. Um, one of the most notorious examples of this is Skullgirls, can actually be shown with a different character. Uh, we'll keep Cerebella, because Cerebella is pretty reliable, but Parasol actually has one of these. Um, and then we'll just grab a bunch of random characters. But yeah, Parasol has a very notorious low overhead mix-up. Because... I'm trying to remember what her... There we go. So... She can do... Uh, her low overhead mix-up is... I, I don't play Parasol, so forgive me for the sloppy execution. This was just the first one I could think of. Um... It, she has so yeah right there as you can see the combo dropped when i did that it reset the combo counter but since the tier was there her projectile and it explodes after a certain amount of time the low will lead to a full combo as you see he, he had to guess, because her other option is an overhead. In that same scenario, she could do that instead. She still gets a full combo, it's very low risk for her. But for the player, every time she hits you, uh, you have to guess. Will it be low or overhead? So... It's one of those things where it's very hard. Uh, a low overhead mix-up is when a character forces you to guess if they're going to do a high, uh, low or an overhead. Uh, and these are typically very hard to block. Uh, in the example of Parasol, it's very hard to block because... Uh, I mean... You guys can... You, you can look at this and see why that's hard to block. They're, they're very similar looking uh, normals. So... Or not similar looking normals, but... You know, you have to be paying attention to where her hands are moving. Uh, which is why it's such a big problem. It, it makes certain characters very hard to uh block against um but yeah uh, that's a low overhead mix up um which is a term you hear a lot a mix up is just when you you have to guess between where you're going to get hit so for example you just saw a low overhead mix up but there's also a grab mix up because i can also just throw him there I can choose not to do the low or the overhead, I can just throw him. So, you know, I can do the, the low, uh, I can do the overhead, or I can just do a throw. And, you know, he, he has to guess which one I'm going to do. So a mix-up is when the opponent has to guess where the next attack is going to hit. Um, or when you are forcing the opponent to guess between where the attack is going to hit. So, that's that's a pretty popular fighting game term that you'll, you'll, you're going to hear a lot, is mix-ups. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. 
An air throw. That's when you throw somebody in the air. You can typically combo off these. These are your anti-airs. An anti-air. It's a move specifically designed to keep an opponent from jumping. Uh, Cerebella has one of the most notorious anti-airs in the game. Because if this poor Beowulf... Um, decides to jump at me. Or jump away from me. Or well, I guess jump towards me, yeah. Because... That's an anti-air. That big red box, if he steps anywhere near that box during his jump, uh, I will automatically grab him. So an anti-air is a move designed typically, or specifically for that. Um, another mechanic that you can show very easily with Cerebella is armor, the concept of armor in a fighting game. So typically, when you hit somebody, they're going to hit stun. Uh, or, you know, you hit somebody when they do a move, they'll get counter hit. Armor allows you to ignore hit stun. You'll still take the damage, like you got hit, and you'll still get hit. Uh, but, you won't suffer from any of the hit stun. It allows you to move through. There are different types of armor. There's armor, super armor, and hyper armor. Armor is when you can do this once. Super armor is when you can do this a few times. Uh, for example, if we do, uh, let's switch to Annie, and then switch back to Parasol. Super armor would be multiple hits of armor. Oh my god, I suck at this. So as you can see there, I had multiple hits of armor. Hyper armor is when the armor has a ridiculous amount of uh, hits to be broken. Uh, so it'll be like, Cerebell's level 3 has like 60 hits of armor. Like there's no, you're not feasibly breaking that. It's armor that's not meant to be broken. However, there are also moves in this game that break armor. Uh, I believe DPs in Skullgirls break armor. Let's find out. Uh, she could hit me, that would be great, but... <laughs> oh my god, she's facing the wrong way. Oh wait, no, that's not an armor break. Well, I guess an easier example would be to show, like, a grab. Grabs typically be armor. You can be grabbed, and then certain moves will instantly break armor. So, for example... She grabbed me through my armor. Since she technically didn't hit me, she threw me. Uh, it went right through my armor. Um, I believe Super's armor break. So she sees the startup of the lock and load, and then she uh, throws a Super. It didn't break my armor, but I had enough hits to break my armor. So, that's the, that's the premise. It's a move that will instantly break armor. Um... Typically, it'll be a super attack or something with a lot of hits that breaks armor. And then in Mortal Kombat, specifically Mortal Kombat 11, there are normals specifically designed to break armor. Um, so let's see. We've talked about normals, specials, supers, enhanced special moves, uh, instant airs, air dashes. Uh, the term cancel is another one. A cancel is when you, you, know, you press a button and then immediately press something else to cancel the recovery. So typically, if I do this medium punch... You know, that's the full recovery of the medium punch. I can't do anything else. If I hold up, whatever. But I can cancel this into a special move. And then I get a combo. Whereas typically, I just get the, the medium punch and then, you know, whatever. But I can cancel this. If I do the input during the move, I get another move. So it cancels when you do a... Uh, when you have an input that can lead into another input. Um... Which is, which is great. Another thing in fighting games is teleports. Teleports are moves that will teleport you closer to the opponent. For example, I was nowhere near her, but without using movement or any, uh, you know, like, not actually moving forward, I'm now next to the, I'm next, next to the opponent. I teleported up to her. That one's got a, you know, a pretty, a pretty literal definition. Um... 
Let's see. So, normals, special moves, supers, EX special moves, uh, Oki, frame advantage, frame disadvantage, uh, throws, throw techs, um, command grabs, armor, super armor, hyper armor, invincibility, hit boxes, hurt boxes, projectiles, setups. Um, That's most of the fighting game terms I can think of. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, and then taunts. Taunts are typically attacks that serve no purpose other than to, uh, you know, see a, a neat animation that is typically designed to make the opponent mad. Um, but yeah, with all that in mind, actually, we'll end this off with a taunt then. Boom. This doesn't do anything to the opponent, but I get to see a cool animation. It's, you know, obviously very unsafe and you can't cancel it, but it's it's to make your opponent angry is what a taunt is. But yeah, with all that out of the way, if I missed anything or you guys want to see any other fighting game terms covered, uh, leave them in the comments below. If you like just saw more to like, comment, subscribe, dislike it if you dislike it. This was me, Azazel the Basement Dweller, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.